last time said there was okay so good evening everyone and welcome to this episode of administration with nancy um today i'm not the one speaking we have an amazing guest um in the person of auditor life beniza israel a lot of you know him already if you're into classroom decoration or whatever there's one name that you know in nigeria that you cannot ignore and that is Eben. Okay, so I'm going to just um, tell you a bit about me in two minutes if you're meeting me for the first time, and then I'll introduce our guest and we go on right away. Um, Lillian, I'm going to make you a co-host so that you can be getting people in because this is becoming a bit distracting. All right, so, so I'm Nancy Pezu. I'm the lead consultant at Pezu Smith Consulting. And I've been a school administrator in four reputable schools leading to their development in four cities in Nigeria. I'm also the convener of the Facebook group Educational Administration Network, and we currently have over 15,000 members. I'm the founder of the Connected School Administrators Academy, where I, I uh, coach and mentor upcoming um, school administrators and those who want to upskill, um, and it's currently the the second cohort is currently running. And you can find out all about me on my website, www.nancyekwezu.com. I'm also the author of three amazing books, three phenomenal books, Dear Educator, The School Administrator's Companion, and my latest book, Effective Boarding House Administration. Incidentally, the copies I came to Calabar with are almost gone because I'll soon be leaving back to Lagos. And um, so if you're in Calabar, you might want to stop by and pick the remaining copies because I'll soon be gone. And if you're in Lagos, you can get them um, directly from me on my website or you reach out to me on 0803-5880367. Once you get to my website, all the details you need are there. You can just Google me, I'm very Googleable. So today's not really about me, it's about our guest. And our topic is, um, what school administrators should know about classroom decoration. And you know, some people just flash on things in their classes and color everywhere and think that's all there is to um, classroom decoration. But we have someone who's a professional in this area and I'm going to introduce him right away by sharing his profile. And after that, Eben is going to come on live. So I'm going to tell you about Eben right away. So Data Life Beniza Israel is a creativity and, and practice and, and practice educator and a, a digital resources creator. He's a focused creativity educator, trainer, and learning environment therapist. He has established and organized lots of workshops and conferences within Nigeria and beyond. He's officially the principal consultant of Creative Mind Educo with about 5,000 members on WhatsApp with the aim of supporting teachers and professionals world, worldwide in their effort to craft educational environments where adults and children thrive. His passion for education holds no bounds and is constantly seeking um, reform in the education sector by embarking on delivering training programs in the classroom, um, management and teachers competency. Ebenezer has presented and contributed to several um, initiated to several books and paper to his credit. Um, he has used his creative work to touch and impact lives. So, to, and he's married to his is he's married to his amazing wife. I've actually met a beautiful uh, woman, and he has a son I love so much. The first time I met his son, I was like, "Wow, oh, he's so full of energy!" And he likes me. He likes me. Hey, I'm so happy. <laughs> so, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, our guest for today. Yeah, 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 Mister. Adetola Ebeneza Israel. I'm going to make you a host right away and then you can um, start in case you have slides to share or anything, you know. So we're starting. So the floor is yours, Adetola Ebeneza Israel. Tell us what school administrators need to know about school, about decoration, because I've visited some schools and I'm almost embarrassed. Like, why are they splashing on everything? Why are the classrooms over decorated? Uh, you know, I'm sure you don't understand the significance of all of this, and that's why I've brought you. You know, this is not my area. I would teach them administration. 
I'll take their management, but those little nitty gritty in classroom, that's not really my thing, even though I do it very well, but that's not something I teach on. So please, the floor is yours, and I'm going to stop sharing now so that you can have the floor fully. Yeah. Thank you very much, Madam Nazi. I really appreciate this invitation. Um, if you can hear me, can you just please say hi? Maybe just wave, just use the... Yes, I can see you can hear me, that's good. Um, let I think uh, the introduction was just direct. That is all about me. Um, the only thing that is just missing there is that I'm the founder of a group called CME Foundation. And on our group, we run the largest WhatsApp platform in Africa for the purpose of supporting teachers and uh, making sure that they are updated with the current learning around the environment. We have been exploring a lot of stuff for the whole of this month. We are going to be exploring curriculum. On Sunday, we explore the arts and STEAM and um, everything about learn, unlearn, and relearn is everything we do on the platform. And um, today I'm going to be exploring with you on everything administrators need on how to create. Uh, maybe not just, let me, don't let me um, start with the word create. Maybe let me just put it this way that um, administrators are also meant to know a lot about the practice that is going on in the classroom in terms of the beauty and the layout of the learning environment. Not just the teachers that are meant to have this knowledge. So that is why I'm invited to this forum to actually educate us on what we know, because I know we too, we already know a lot. So I'm going to, I'm going to be bringing my own ideas and um, how I've been able to build up a policy, which is called the learning environment and display policy for teachers. And I'm going to be using that policy to guide us on what we need to know and how we can use this knowledge in our various environments. So as I said, my name is Odetola Ebeniza Israel. So let me start this way. The learning environment has a lot of untapped potential that can be used as an active contributor to the learning in the classroom. I don't see the learning environment as just um, as just the full layer of the classroom, whereby it is just used for the learners to just come in and just come and play, have fun, and the teacher serving as the author and the finisher of everything. I don't believe that the teacher is the full owner of the classroom. The learning environment also has some potential that can be used to add some knowledge to the children in the classroom. And whenever I talk about this topic, there's something I do talk about, that the learning environment, the environment you find yourself will determine your thinking. The environment you find yourself will determine everything that is going to come out of you as outcome at the end of the day. So how do you set this learning environment as teacher? And also, what are the ways at which we need to set this environment, whether global practice? Um, I've actually done a lot of research on this, and um, my research is guiding me on how the learning environment needs to be set. The last research I made in 2017 was the pedagogical influence of design and aesthetics on the learning environment using three major um, subject matter as um, case study in terms of um, academic performance. And then what I observed that this learning environment is not something small at all. It's something big that um, teachers, administrators, school owners need to focus on. I transformed the classroom. I Let me try and see whether if we can get the picture of the classroom or I will try all of that later. I transformed the classroom. Then after transforming the classroom, something happened at the end of the day. I transformed the classroom like on a Friday, the children came, um, actually arrived to school back on the Sunday on the Monday. Then after coming back to school, they were surprised. Oh, oh, our environment has actually changed. What's happening? This is a new classroom. One of the boy came in, then when the boy came in, the boy left back again that I'm not sure this is my classroom. So what I observed about this scenario was that when they have new environment, they put on newness out of them. When I mean newness, they put on new attitude. They put on new character towards learning. Something happened after they also came in also into the classroom. Some set of people came in first and they were now controlling others. Okay, this is where to put your bag. Put your bag here. Our classroom is beautiful. Uh, this is where to sit. You know, 
the classroom was set in such a way that they could not actually resist the urge of just trying their best to make sure that people see that their classroom is outstanding. I'm trying to look for a place so that you can see the classroom I'm talking about. You know, so from that, I get to understand that the classroom environment has a very big potential, not just as it's just serving as environment. You know, yes, this is the this is the classroom. I just saw it. This was the classroom before. Okay, I don't know whether you can see my screen. This was the classroom before. Um, let me see. And um, the classroom after was something great. So as I was saying, the classroom, the, the learning environment is as important as the curriculum. And the build learning environment can become an active instructional tool. This learning environment can become an active instructional tool rather than just a building, rather than just a space. That means in our school, everybody should have it in their mind as administrator that the quality of display, the quality of anything hang on the wall, they serve as, the, as a silent curriculum. What's the silent curriculum? This is the other part of the curriculum that speak without it being interpreted to the students in the classroom. So that means that the silent curriculum is another curriculum that when parents come around, and that's one of the first thing they see when they come around to school. One of the major thing that parents even, even one of the major thing that parents come around to see when they want to come and check the learning environment for their children, maybe for enrollment, is the learning environment. That means this learning environment is so much important. When they come to school, the first thing they will ask, can I see the see some of the classroom that you have? How we inviting the classroom? How we inviting the corridor? How we inviting the reception? We determine whether the parent will enroll the child in that school or not. So that is why I said that the learning environment or the display around the learning environment can serve as the silent curriculum, meaning that the aesthetics and design of the classroom having the power to facilitate and enhance the learning, the learning progress, the learning process in a similar way to the normal curriculum in the classroom. So as administrator, this is the next thing I'm going to write now. What do we need to know about this display? As administrator, what are those things we should be expecting from each teacher in the classroom? As administrator, what are those education that we need to give to the secretary that is going to be taking or the, the person in time of in, in charge of admission that is going to be taking parent round to every classroom? What are they going to be educated about in terms of the learning environment and some of those things that they see around the learning environment? As also the administrator, what should be your role in terms of making sure that this learning environment is inviting and is also updating, not just <laughs> standing still. Like um, I went to a school somewhere in Nasarawa State and then after designing the school, I've set up everything and I said, okay, as much as possible, I trained them, I, I, I informed them that as much as possible, some of these things will be changed at least every six months or every term so that the children can have something else to see and it should be reflecting the curriculum to them. And then something happened at the end of the day, I went back there about three years later and I saw the same thing. <laughs> That I actually that I actually left in that school. I saw those same thing back there. They should not be stagnant. They should be what they should be as much as possible be changing again and again. So let me start with the first thing I said. The first thing we need to know: what is the purpose of display in the learning environment? What is the purpose of display? Or let me use the word, it's not the word display. Let me first define it. The meaning of display or the definition of display, it can be defined as an active contributor to the learning environment, and it must reflect the curriculum and visual. So that means that every display in the classroom should reflect the curriculum and also should build curiosity in children. So one of the purpose of it is to provide support for all staffs. So simply means that the staffs that are going to be coming around to the school, they should be able to know that yes, all these are supporting us. Maybe the, the what we are teaching in the classroom. So I am teaching uh, maybe for science, there's a project in my class. 
to I'm talking about um, digestive system or I'm talking about um, solar system and more, I should be able to have something around the school that reflect that. Another thing is to provide a framework for the old school approach. So a framework, maybe like um, a framework, like, like, like a guide for the school at large. And also to inform the visitor, parents, and everybody coming around the school that this school actually mean business. I think it's, a, it's just a small one. I'm still going to make it uh, somehow um, very direct. I think this one sounds very, very complicated somehow. So let me put it this way. Let me list about five. The first one, every display in your school should, should ensure that, or let me put it this way. Every display that you have around the school, this is like a policy right now. That means I, as an administrator, if I'm going to be giving my teacher's guide that, okay, every teacher in this school, I want the following from you. So these are the guide right now as an administrator. So as an administrator, what should be my expectation from my teacher? So if I am the administrator right now, so I'm going to be expecting the following in the classroom, that Anything you hang on the wall, maybe in form of display, maybe in form of a, in instructional material, should support the people's thinking and imagination. So my goal is to make sure that I come to the classroom and look at it. This particular content you hang on this board, by the time this child is looking at it, will the child be feeling, oh, this content looks quite small, or it's just like putting butterfly in year six cutting butterfly and hanging butterfly on the wall in year six. And I know some of these my year six students because I also teach in the classroom. I know the way they feel. They're like feeling like big boys and big girls these days. So um, how, would you, how would they feel seeing butterfly in the classroom without support their thinking and imagination and without also be able to add to their learning or they'll be feeling that, oh, this is quite small in the classroom. So I'm going to tell us more about the difference between content and aesthetics. I hope there will be time for me because I talk, <laughs> I talk a lot. <laughs> so the next one, every display in the classroom should support people's thinking. I said that and should also offer an excellent first impression. What do I mean by that? Every display in the school, you should as much as possible support a what offer a first impression because first impression matters. When children come into the school, by the time they come in for first week of resumption, should they actually meet a classroom that is upside down or should they meet a classroom that is well organized? We all know what is called false impression. Even for parents, false impression what matters a lot. So also every display board should communicate to different audiences. So very direct. When they come in into the school, that all those display, all those content should also communicate to all the ages in the school. So by the time a year one is reading that child, that chart on the board, the child should have at least, in terms of grammar, some of the grammar should be at least minimum for especially the one at the corridor so that everybody can read and everybody can be what can be carried along. Another one is that every display board should show evidence that our children are creative and also should be able to display what the children have actually explored or learned so far. So what do I mean? There's a particular part of every display board in the school that celebrates children. So simply means that um, some school, in some British school, um, the philosophy is that um, at the corridor of at the corridor to the entrance of each class, there should be a board tied to um, um, child center display board. That is a display board that is created for the child to be able to hang some of their work. So sometimes it can just be. Maybe they are creative writing. Creative writing can be, can be hung on the wall using some um, um, uh, what's it called? Um, colored markers to express themselves. It can be hung on the wall. Also, they are, even math projects can be hung on the wall. Science projects can be hung on the wall as much as possible for you to create a sense of belonging learning environment. They need to have something that, what, that belong to them. So another thing is that every display board should be people centered yes it should be people centered that means uh, in some classroom they hang display board above the height of the child uh, that uh, even in nursery some of the preschool 
of classes, I do see that and I feel bad a lot when I see that the display board is hung above the height and the child will be struggling, trying to look up, oh, what's happening here, this and that. So I don't really like that. So as soon as possible, it should be at the height of the child. And we know there are grand rules. Hmm? Because these children with distrust of this thing does not mean we should not bring in content. They will surely be used to it. I've been to a school before where they said, they will tear it, they will do that. And I said, can you please give us two years or one year? This, it is adaptation. It's just like Nigeria as a country. It's like some of us now, when we walk on the street of Lagos and we drink a bottle of a, a, a bottle of water, some of us feel very shy to actually drop it on the road because the Nigeria, the Lagos thing we know before is now what is now quite very clean than the one we know before. So when you create an environment that is serving as, uh, as an example, they will surely will follow that example at the end of the day. So another thing is that every display in the, in the classroom environment should be of high quality. How do we ensure this? High quality. That means that your display board, your cutting should be very small. If you want to, some school, they have a particular font they use. If it is Sasu Primary, you use. If it is Comic Font, they have a particular font that will make every display board in the school as a form of a form of unity and have a form of um, a form of repetition around the learning environment, so that there won't be oh this one, this, this one, that orderliness in the school environment. And another thing is that every display board should should um, every display board should ensure learning and display promotes um, opportunity to learning. Okay, sometimes you know um, there are a lot of problems that actually arises every time. Like last time we were we our major topic was all about anti-bully, and every display board at least in a school, if you for secondary school, we should have um, anti-bully display. So anti-bullying display can be a poster. Anti-bullying display can be a full display. And then there is this one I explored last time. Um, the idea was that um, we ended up having an anti-bully anthem. So on a particular big chart, we have anti-bully anthem. Then on the anti-bully anthem, we, we invited the school lawyer. So when we invited the school lawyer, every student in the school, they all sign on that anthem. The answer was that I promise not to do this, do that. You know, some of those things. I know administrators are speaking about that. So it's just like signing, signing the what's it called? Oath of allegiance or whatever. So everybody sign on it. So when they go, when they, you know, visual, visual has a way of reminding you something. So that's why visual has a very big power. And everything we are talking about right now is all about visual, visual content, making sure that the children see it again and again and they are being reminded of what to do so again is that um, every display board should let me look for more for some other word every display board should be uh, should reflect the school vision and vision and, and, and mission as so many schools have been to and um, after writing the name of the school at the front of the school the name of the school so 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 so, so, so college mission um core value creativity value this and that apart from that front of the school, everywhere in the school environment, we are not going to be seeing core value or the mission, the vision, or the grid of the school. That's very wrong. In every classroom, hmm? it's just like an organization. If an organization is known for integrity, there should be a reflection of that word in every corner of that classroom or of that organization. So if my school core value is integrity, creativity, passion, and love, I should have those four things at the front of the classroom mounted there, the school core value, mission and vision, so that by the time they are reading that, they already know that this is what the school has for us. So at the end of the day, they all know, even, be, be, even before the school, even achieving those things, they will be what as much as possible be following those things as they are reading it. And you know, um, 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 visual as a way as a way of influencing us. It's just like if I'm hungry right now and I'm seeing a poster of Indomie or I'm seeing a poster of Chicken Republic. So by the time I'm looking left and right, a poster of Indomie. Uh -uh. Indomie, immediately you'll be feeling like eating Indomie. Then again, you are seeing a poster of uh, Mozico. So some of those things, the purpose of posters, the purpose of advertisement 
is for a reminder, reminding them that, oh, we are still in the market. We are still in the market. So the purpose of some of this content in the classroom is for the children to see that, yes, this content is needed. You need to learn this. You need to focus on this and more. So another thing is that every display board should promote questioning. Questioning, ask them questions with your display board. You know, we need to make sure that we ask them questions. Let them be curious. Hmm? A, a, a child that can answer question, that can ask question, is going to be an outstanding child. And as much as possible, you should create, you should make sure that every display board has tied to in every classroom. There should be tied to on all display board. It should be tied to on all display board. It should be tied to. Another thing is that every display board should be border drawn. There should be a frame, like a border around every display board. It's, it is a global practice. Another thing is that every display board should have a taste of 2D or 3D. That means that all the display board in the classroom should not just be flat. Should not just be flat. You should have a form of something that is what that is forming 3D, three dimensional. You know, we want to create curiosity by trying to tell them that um, we are interpreting the curriculum in, in, in a dynamic way so that they can actually what flow along everything in the classroom. Another thing is that um, um, you should be able to remind teachers also that the school wall should not be destroyed. <laughs> I know, I know some of us do. <laughs> you should be able to remind them that the school wall the classroom. Don't paste directly on the wall. If you want to paste directly on the wall, you should have something like a masking tape that you use to what to paste some of those things directly on the wall. Let me bring some kind of expectation for you. I think the one I even read is a kind of expectation. Expectation that every uh, musical, every administrator should be expecting from teachers and also every administrator should be, should be guiding teachers to be able to achieve in the classroom. And I said, uh, maybe let me add some to it. Um, one of the things I'm going to add to it is that um, I've mentioned border ground. And the map mentioned, I did not mention something. Every display board should be changed regularly in order to maximize the children's interest. So for us to get their interest, it should be changed regularly. So let's talk about all the types of display board that is needed in every classroom. The board that is needed in every classroom. Yes, there are so many types of let me let me start with the classification of display. The classification of display. There are different types of display. In Nigeria, we call them decoration. <laughs> they are there is what the classification of decoration, but it is normally generally called display. Display is anything that you that you that you place around in the learning environment. An example is that um, when we have the learning environment painted and um, the ties is just there, some of the content we display there at the shelf, some of the content we display there at the uh, musical, the tables, the display, the projector, and posters are more. So classification of display. We have poster. Poster can be in form of A4, can be in form of A3, and more. Another thing, another one we have for display itself, or we call it display board. A display board is like, let me see, you can, let me try and show us um, an example of, um, Okay. I have um, so many pictures um, and you can see some of them on my website. So these are like display. So these are display. Okay, these are posters and these are posters. This is also an example of poster, but I call it classroom banner. Um, these are also display. And then um, the tree at the back of the class, especially, um, if you want to create a policy, you can create a policy that every display in the nursery should have a taste of nature. I like that. There should be a taste of nature and the nature should be engaged for any of the following, whether for reading, whether for wow word, whether for, for number counting, or any other word that you want to use to interpret that. So let me talk about the types of display board in the classroom. The first one, um, the first one, let's explore 
Um, the first one is called the Child Center Display Board. I already explained this before. Child Center Display Board is, uh, is a type of display board that is, that is used to display the children's achievement. So the children's achievement need to be displayed. So as much as possible, we need to display the children's achievement. Another type of board, we have the seasonal celebration display board. Every, the seasonal celebration display board, it is a, a type of display board that is being used to be able to display seasonal celebration. Like now, um, this week, we should be talking about uh, Mother's Day. Um, uh, at the end of this month, we should be talking about Children's Day. There are some types of display board that should be reflecting that in the learning environment. Another one, we have, we have memory board. Memory board is a type of board that is um, it's just like a board that children pay attention to almost regularly. So as much as possible, a memory board, they are like a multiplication table counting uh, like in preschool. It is 100% that your memory board should be at the front of the classroom. Left and right, you have uh, your literacy and your numeracy. So your lowercase for your, for your literacy or your numeracy number is your number, whether they, they, they count one to 100 or one to 50, you actually will type, type that or cut that on the screen. And next one, we have a uh, um, conceptual display board. So conceptual display board is majorly for year five and six. It's a type of board that we use to be able to conceptualize the subject like their math and English. And uh, sometimes we bring out one word out of it and more. I wish I can be showing out some of these in visual. I forgot to um, share my slide. I will have just or do. Okay, let me see what I can just share slide for this immediately. I will try. So um, a conceptual display board actually does that. Another thing is that um, we have another board called decorative display board, majorly for decoration. And we have door display. Every door, the door to the entrance of every classroom is the identity of the classroom. The door to the entrance of every classroom is the identity of the classroom. So every teacher should know that this is the identity of your class. What do you want to reflect on this door? But some school, um, due to some aesthetics of some doors these days, some schools don't actually have any door at all to display on. So that's also fine. But at least when we enter, there should be something that what that will talk about your, your door in the classroom environment. Okay, um, another thing, we also have another type of board, another type of board called um, uh, motivational display board, motiv motivational display board, motivational display board is a kind of board that is used to motivate learners. So as much as possible, they need to be motivated. So they should be having um, a type of... Mm, no, 17. Five by 17. Sorry, please. Um, as much as possible, children should be motivated. Children should be motivated, and uh, they should have some. You should have a taste of motivation around the around the children in the classroom. Or can you give me just two minutes? Let me display something. I want to display some of this type of display board so that we can see immediately. So Nancy, you can use that to quickly refresh the classroom again. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear that bit. To this to refresh. Okay, so I'm sure we've had so much to learn, and um, some of the things I've picked have been that the the you can use the classroom um, decorations to actually create the kind of environment that you want, and then he has also talked about. Um, that the decorations are kind of silent classroom. And so the children are learning from it consciously or unconsciously. And so everything that you put on your wall um, or any part of your school should actually be meaningful. And he has also said that the um, decoration should not be stagnant. It should be something that you, you know, constantly change. So let's hear from you. What exactly have you picked? 
I'm the only one talking now. So who wants to say something while he comes on again? I think he's trying to get his slides ready. Lillian, what have you picked from here? Lillian, would you want to say something? Okay, someone is raising their hand up. Um, who could that be so that I can unmute the person? Uh, um, okay, I just want to. Okay, since I can't unmute, um, I actually had to apply that function because I. Okay, so let me unmute you, Lillian. Uh, Lillian, Lillian. Okay, so you can unmute now. Good evening, everyone. Lillian. Okay, can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes, please. Okay. All right, so what I learned, I learned quite, I've, I enjoyed what he was saying. Um, what thing I picked was that he said it's, the display boards can be actually be used as a silent um, curriculum. So even though um, you're not standing there and talking the way we usually talk as teachers, children are actually learning passively from those you know, those displays on the board. So meaning that the display has to be meaningful, like you said, and the display should, the display should not just stand there as decorations. They should stand there as learning. Um, yes, there should be things that the children will use, be, use, be able to use to learn passively. And they should not just be anything from anywhere. You can grab things from different parts of your curriculum that you want to highlight them and then that you want the children to actually learn. If there's anything you want them to learn, looking at your in different subjects, maybe math, uh, numeracy, literacy, anything, just pick things that you want the children to learn in that term and just display them. And then one basic thing I, he, he said was that the display should not be too much high above the eye level of the children. So your display board, should be placed strategically on the wall in such a way that when you put up things, the children will not have to raise up their eyes too much to see. That's what I learned. In other words, for each class, there should be age appropriateness in terms of level, the height. Yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be so high. Like some, some displays go straight up to the roof. So when the children need to read, they are looking up. It's not too. Professional is not too good like that, actually. So if the if the, the displays display boards, so they are soft boards they place on the wall where you now mount your displays. The soft board should not be too high. It should be placed in such a way that if, when you now mount your displays, the children will not have to um, raise their neck too high to view. That's just it. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Lillian. Even is back here, so I think you'll take it from there. Okay, Iben. Iben, are you there? Sorry, I was not, I was just talking. I was thinking I already, okay, I know you can hear me now. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so I was not thinking of using slide before, but um, let me quickly be showing us, this is um, the classroom I told you I converted and um, it was quite simple. The goal was to make sure that I converted the classroom from, from the first picture over here, then to the next picture over here. So the goal is that the learning environment arrangement can guide children's behavior. And I actually have talked about that. And uh, another thing is that we need to modify this, this environment to actually 
make sure that we use it to control the children's behavior. And um, it is very important. And um, when it comes to the learning environment, a lot of teachers focus more on so many things, so many things like um, differentiation, um, focuses more on um, teaching methodologies and all that. Why the learning environment is being left behind, whether to the school owner to set. I know a lot of schools that um, it is just the school owner that is just uh, in, in charge of everything in terms of learning environment. Why the teacher just come around to just come and teach. So I don't actually believe in that philosophy. The teachers are the people that actually know what exactly they are going to be teaching for, in the team for that particular term. So as much as possible, they should be able to turn every aesthetics in the classroom to instructional material. And the goal is not to make the classroom look beautiful. Hmm? I'm going to get to that slide. The learning environment, as I said, is as important as the curriculum. I've mentioned that. And um, as much as possible, you should be able to recognize that. Every classroom should have something as at least as display board. This, I'm using this to talk to secondary school. A lot of secondary school believe that they are in a mature classroom. They should not have anything like aesthetics at all. A room without at least one display board is barren. Children need to see something beside a barren room because in this room that we call the classroom, when we turn some of those contents, when we hang them on the wall in the classroom, they can teach, they can inform, and they can create a feeling of openness to the classroom environment. Effective teacher look for every opportunity to increase student learning with the classroom environment resources. So we should not ignore this at all. And um, this is uh, I, one of the slides that, yes, this is the one I actually want to talk about. The goal is not to design the classroom. The goal at all is not to design the classroom. It is good to design classroom, but should our goal be to just design the classroom? No. Design in the classroom and not just what they look like. This is a quote by Steve Job. And this man was trying to educate people that use his phone. He's the founder, he's the founder of iPhone. And then he said, my phone is not how it looks like. I changed the quote to mine. My phone is not how it feels like. And he said, my phone is how it works. So I changed this to the design of your classroom. It's not how it feels like. When they come in into your classroom, should the design goal be for them to just come around and just use the word, I like this classroom. Your classroom is beautiful. That should not just be the goal of your classroom environment alone. The goal of your classroom environment is how it works. How do you want this classroom environment to teach, to serve as the silent curriculum, or to also serve as what I call the tall teacher? The tall teacher, that means another teacher in the classroom teaching on my behalf in the classroom environment. So the solution, the solution I divine display board, I said it's an active contributor, um, it's an active instructional tool that can be used to what? To activate student inquiries. And I said something that every display board should represent, should represent the curriculum covered in the classroom. This is very important. Every display board in the classroom should what? Should actually do something, should, um, should cover the work, should should cover the curriculum in visual and the classroom environment. Displayed also should give a snapshot of the school to the visitor. Yes. When the visitor come around, like this display board, uh, when I designed this display board, there was a color day celebration in the school. And um, we also have a team for that week. The team was champion. And then um, for that day, they were having a color day. So we bring the word, we tie to it, we are champions. We love color. So these, when parents are coming in immediately, even the color day was for early years and the high school are uh, actually there um, and the um, primary school are, the, are, are in the same environment. By the time the primary school parents are coming, they will be able to see, oh, the, the color day celebration in the school. Oh, this is lovely. So it is also selling the words, selling the school environment. So it, and it is very important. So another thing is that the design this is very important, and I have to pay attention to this. The design of the classroom can provide teachers with a unique opportunity that can be used to create a dynamic interface between the teachers and the lesson. 
when we want to rent an apartment, there's somebody we go through. We go through the, uh, what do we call it, agent. The agent is an intermediary between you and the landlord or the landlady. What is the intermediary between you and your students in the classroom? Majorly the intermediary between some of us is just the board that we write on. Some of those things that we have left and right in the classroom should be an intermediary. It should be an intermediary. We have some curious children in the classroom that they won't even pay attention at all. They will just be looking left and right in the classroom. So what should they see when they what? When they when what should they see when they when when they are looking left and right in the classroom environment? So I have actually explained the all of this. I've explained all of this um, during some of the class. I said it should be age appropriate and order. And another thing is that at the front of the classroom, very important. I said literacy and what and numeracy, very important. Let's try and add that. And the categories of this playboard, I mentioned um, nature, every classroom, you have a taste of nature at the back of the class. This is um, somewhere at Maduguri. And then when I converted this classroom, my goal was very simple. My goal was to, my goal was very simple. My goal was just to make sure that I create a, a, a library for them in that school. Oh, sorry. My goal was to create a kind of library for them in that school. So um, this, is, this is the one I'm actually talking about. So when I actually finished this, it was something great at the end of the day. And the teacher actually came in. Oh, what are we going to do here? They said they are going to bring in a maths and they are going to be doing this. They are going to be doing counting and more. So you can turn your reading corner. You can have a tree around your reading corner. You can call it any, any kind of word you can use. You can demonstrate that corner in the school environment. So nature is very needed. So I mentioned seasonal display, but I mentioned door. The door is, the, is actually the identity of the classroom. Likewise, the entrance of your school is the identity of your school. Create an identity with the with the, with the with the with the front of the school. So as much as possible, it is very important. Child centered, celebrate children's work, celebrate children themselves in the classroom. When the birthday comes, depending on the policy in your school, tell them there's something on the board that should be able to reflect their birthday. And I mentioned some posters according to the classification of display. It should be banners motivating them and doing a lot in the school environment. They have a lot of effects. They do have a lot of effects. Another thing is inspirational display board. I remember when I decorated this board somewhere around Lekki in Lagos, um, something happened in that school after decorating this board. The title of the board is Step into Problem Solving. Step into Problem Solving. What are those steps into problem solving? The first one I mentioned, see the problem without a blame. The next one, think about solutions, safe and respectful. The next one, explore consequences. What could happen if the next one, pick the best solution, make your plan. And the girl was molested in this school. And then because, you know, it has power, poster has power. Because the girl has been seeing this same poster again and again and again, the girl actually what? The girl actually confessed to the teacher. Oh, this is what has been happened to me. When I get home, this happened. When I get home, this happened. So, some of these display board, we can use it to modify their behavior as, and as much as possible. Um, another type of display board is the behavioral display. We have two types of behavioral display. The first one is in the form of a display board. The second one is in the form of rules. The rules should be below the board in the classroom. And the rules should not be a very concrete rules. Ooh, the rules can be, be nice, be attentive, do your homework, be polite. You know, these are some of just use the word be. And I know as teachers, you have endless words that you can use, that you can bring out to actually do that. So um, like this now, I can control my hands. This can be around the corridor in the school. I can control my action. I can control my feet. I can control my thoughts. I can control my mouth and so many of those things. And you can bring this, you know, this is just looking like a boy's stuff. You can bring it into girls, uh, girls uh, what is it called also environment also and i know it will um move very nice and i was talking about memory display board memory display board those are some of the um, some of them are like one word you know there are some words that are difficult for these students to spell in the classroom so we can generate words from the 
literacy or comprehension that we are reading in, in, the, in the classroom and what paste them on the board so that your children can continuously be seeing those words and what and um, use it to remember those words in the classroom environment. So another thing, this is another type of wow word and uh, they are very much important in the classroom environment. Another one um, is um, the window. The window of the school, um, some schools don't actually like it, but um, I see that some of the major things that can serve, that can be used to create identity for the school environment. So the window of the school should have something and should have something. And some of those things can be used to get interest of people around to your school, depending on your policy, some school do simplicity. Thematic, some school run thematic curriculum. So if you run a thematic curriculum, what should be your goal around thematic curriculum? What should be your goal around thematic curriculum? If your school, if you have a very large space in your school environment, some part of this, some, some part of this place should be assigned to each class. So like one of my school that I consult for, um, in some part of the school, they, we have, um, um, for, a, for a particular thing, we talk about country. So country, okay, year one is going to be year one China, another part of year one, year one Chile, another part of year one, year one Morocco, or year two, Conga, this and that. So every display board around the school, we have them talking about country. Then later we move to science. From science, we talk about so many topics and more. Then later, then we move to recycling. So a lot of those stuff are needed in the school environment. And also, I talk about conceptual, use conceptual to be able to conceptualize content in the classroom. Interactive display board. Some of the display board that we create sometimes are not interactive. How do you create interactive display board? You create interactive display board by making sure that they are removable. So you can use it for question and answer, using it to engage children. You can use it in form of flashcard. Having flashcard on the table and the children will pick Pick, 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 pick up more. So administrators can what can use some of this knowledge to be able to guide teachers in the classroom. And I'm about to finish. Um, the next one is that um, everybody in the school should be educated, should be educated about um, about the digital footprint. Education about digital literacy is now very important right now. So the children should know about the consequences of posting a lot of stuff online. What are your digital footprint says about you. Do you know that if you say a lot of stuff about the United States of America, if I, if I press your name, search your name, and write United States at the front of it, it's going to bring the relationship between you and the United States? Yes. Some people have been to the embassy and they have been denied just because of this. They've said a lot, and some of those things have been backfiring. Even before I was thinking, it's all about um, just typing on social media. Even these days, when you say a lot, some of these phone, Android phone, they are recording. They are recording some of those things some of us are saying. So they pick words. When they pick some of those words, okay, let me use why, how they pick words. Do you know sometimes you can be talking about Domino Pizza, Domino Pizza, Domino Pizza. In the next two days, you are going to be getting adverts for Domino Pizza on your social media or even text message. <laughs> I know you are laughing out there. So as much as possible, digital footprint the children should be educated about it. Another one is that technology is now being integrated into display in the school. There's a school I work for, and then what we explored that time during the um, open day, when the parents are about to come to the school, we observed that there was no time for us to show the parents what exactly we have explored. We need them to be able to know that we have, we have done a lot, you know, we have done a lot. So what we now did was to compile everything on classroom websites. There's a free classroom website through the use of Google Sites. And then um, I would recommend you to my YouTube channel. I have a lot of resources from technology to classroom decoration and more that you can go and use to learn on learn and relearn. So um, the classroom website was created with all the children's pictures of activity, 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 presentation, video, integrated YouTube to it. Then when the parents are going, you, we just tell them um, kindly scan. And we have been informed, we've informed them to download QR code scanner so when they get to each class, they don't want to see the experience of our class for the whole of the year or for the whole of the term. They just can and they will get access to the whole class website showing everything about the work, about the classroom. And you can do this beyond just, uh, you know, it is because we don't have access to phone in the classroom. That's why we are living, we are just using parent home for now. But I know later in the NRS future, which I've actually prophesied that children will be coming to school with their phone from the age of six. I'm sure that because 
learning will now be technology based that even our display we need to have qr code scanner we also need to have one of these application again that can be used to create interactive between the display on the board and technology in the classroom and the last part of it i'm going to talk about which is the last part of display is the seating arrangement the seating arrangement should be monitored also in the school some people believe in that uh, the way it has been arranged from week one should be the way it should be arranged from from week one to week ten no i don't believe in that at all so it should be changing it should be changing children are movable objects children are people that like change so they should be changing learning environment um, um, uh, arrangement based on what is being taught in the classroom like every week i do advice so this week i'm i'm teaching more of collaboration i have quizzes to present i have um um, I want to group them for their math. I want to group them for their literacy or any other subject they are teaching in the classroom. You can use group method, group them into four. You can use this. You can use this for grouping. This can be used for grouping and um, to two group. No, no, not that bad. Tandem. If you are doing more of reading, you are about to do some reading. Um, this um, this can be used for reading. This can be used for reading. This and this can be used for reading. So a lot of arrangements out there. You need to go and explore those arrangements. And then when you also know it as an administrator, it is very important and it will be of benefit to you. So that some of the teachers, if they are not doing it well, you will just be using your experience to just guide them about, okay, can you please do this? Can you please add this to it? So as soon as possible, you need to also research. You need to get more knowledge, more knowledge, more knowledge about this. So, and um, at this point, I am actually done with us. So, if you have questions, um, I think this time I, I welcome questions. Let me quickly do a recap of everything I've actually explored. Um, I started to talk about um, how the learning environment is very important, and I talk about how it can be used to modify children's behavior, and I also talk about that. The learning environment as an active contributor to the learning in the classroom and can be used towards to um, create the silent curriculum. And I define the silent curriculum as, as the aesthetics and design of the classroom with the power to facilitate the learning process in a similar way to the overt curriculum. So, we know that um, everybody knows their audiences. The audiences are from the parents to their colleagues and so many, so many people coming to the school and the excellent and false impression matters a lot. So I talk about false impression and I also talk about the purposes of display board in the school environment. I listed all the types of display board from the child center display board, seasonal display board, memory display board. There's also a research based display board. There's also there's so many display board. There's a book display board is of schools book display board that display all the cover of books from nursery to year six. Huh? Some people use that same book display board to display some keynote um, part of the magazine or a, news, a, news, a newspaper in the country. You know, innovation. And then the school environment um, can also be used to be connected to the global world. So as much as possible, anything that is happening in the global world should be what to be reflected in the classroom environment and as much as possible it should be changing um the the classroom environment should be well organized resources should be well organized make um, the sources to be accessible to children and um, and as much as possible teachers should learn a lot of skill to be able to make some of this practical that's why i read the word practical because this is a slide that contains practical and theory uh, so the next thing I would have talked about so many, so many practical steps and more. But at this point, um, we just do um, question and answer. So by the time we are done with the question and answer, then with this, I can now um, answer the question. Thank you. A lot of time. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Ben. I can already see comments here. Someone says, thanks so much for the class arrangement. Ayomide says, wow, what an eye opener. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's take questions right away. I think I've already unmuted two people that raised their hands. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. 
I so okay. much enjoy your presentation this evening. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please, we can hear you. Okay, I say I indeed enjoy your presentation about thank class preparation and display. Thank you. And I can, you. I can also say that classroom display can be seen as aid to learning. Yeah. It can be seen as aid to learning. So I want yeah. to ask you questions. The first one, the first one, I want to know what kind of classroom decoration and display can be done in second session. Knowing that what, what is uh, obtainable in primary or nursery cannot be obtainable in secondary. You know, like in nursery, they like flashy things. You can decorate the classroom with uh, colors and uh, uh, posters. Then in secondary, the, it's a different ball game. That's my first question. The second question, I discovered that many teachers teaching in secondary school, they like teaching in abstracts. I know that when you are teaching with a lot of display, it makes learning fast. So how do we convince secondary school teachers to make use of the various displays that you have already mentioned that add learning? Thank you very much. These are my two questions. Thank you. Shall I answer this question now? Nancy? Yes, please. This is uh, the one for secondary, yes. Okay, so we have some set of display board for secondary and um, depend on the type of curriculum that you run in your school. Like um, one of the school I work for, the advice I give them was simple and direct. Like in the school, the name of some of the classes are attached to philosophers like um, Obafemi Awulowo, Aban Einstein, so many great people out there. So we have um, year seven Aban Einstein, year seven um, Obafemi Awulowo, year eight Nambi Azikwe and more. So what we did was that um, we have four boards in the classroom. There are four big boards at the back of the classroom. The first board is majorly used to interpret all the names of to, to bring the codes and the achievements of the the name of the class, the tag name of the class. So if the class is Obafemi Awolowo, so we have on one of the board talking about some quotes about Obafemi Awolowo, where he was, his, his education, his philosophy and some, you know, the facts we are going to be writing about Obafemi Awolowo at this time is going to be some kind of facts that are, that are not just um, tiny. They are going to be long words as soon as possible that the children can engage with, especially at that age. Then another type of board we have, we have a welcome board. So the welcome board majorly just talk about welcome to year eight, more, uh, what's it called? Year eight, Aban Einstein. They can have a class slogan, a class to learn with, decorated also, simple. There is nothing like butterfly at this time at all. It is just <laughs> background. <laughs> it is just background and write-up. Background and write-up and bordered round. It is only in GSS1. In GSS1, they still like to have some of those sense of having beautiful classrooms. So you can have some of those ideas of year six, where we have some cutouts of flowers, this and that, and putting in their own. And um, that will actually be nice a lot. Then I have two more board left. On one of the board, um, we have two things you can use that board for. Is how you use motivation on it, or you use anti bullying on it. But as I said, Every term has its own um, uh, topic. Like this term, we are talking about morale. So yes. for that board, for this term, we are displaying morals on those on those boards. For this term, then the last board is the children's center display board. So if they have creative writing, if they have uh, um, um, class projects, so that board is majorly used to just display some of those stuff in the classroom and. Um, Classroom decoration for secondary school is more of what I call participatory decoration. Participatory decoration simply means that the children will participate in this, pro in this process, not that it will be 
something that okay um the teacher will come and be doing it so you will just set the atmosphere like the one of our handstand and more will be done by you as the class teacher um every other one done by you and the last one for them will be done by the children in the classroom so we leave it to them for them to paste a lot then another board for them again is information board timetable information that they need about the classroom should be there a for paper and on the wall another one we have we have the core value the school mission and vision um the school um grid and one other one at the front of the classroom those ones at the front of the classroom then if you have posters that have motivational quotes posters that have motivational quotes about learning, effect of learning and more, you can have paste them around. Have I answered the secondary school? But not yes. in practical. It does have yes. <laughs> Thank yeah, you very like much. Yeah, in addition, the yeah, research work, I remember when I was a school administrator, I always encourage them to have sections for the children's research work so they could research mm. and then actually have um, things displayed there. Thank you so much. When someone is asking here, before I get someone else, she says, what can we use in sticking displays that has always falling off? Okay. Uh, to stick display, there are so many materials you can use to stick display. I use Uyu gum majorly, but uh, if you are sticking on the wall, you don't need to use Uyu gum because it will destroy that wall. That's why I advise that Every, dis every classroom should have a display wood. Hmm? Then you paste on that display wood. So if you, want, if you want to stick on a display wood, use either um, Uyu gum or uh, the top bond. You are fine with those two materials. Yeah, when I was a school administrator, I encouraged the tacky glue that, you know, it comes like, it looks like chewing gum. This tacky yeah. glue. I had, I'm, I'm, I'm not in my house now. They've shown you because I have some in my house in Lagos. Yeah, I know. So I know. It. Just grow them and then you, they are reusable. But the unfortunate thing, there are a lot of fake ones now that actually pull the the ones I used when I was a school administrator. You could, after the end of the term, when we we're pulling down decorations, you could pull them out and they would not have any effect on the wall. And then you just oh. put them back and reuse the next term. But in the last pack I got in Lagos, I found that it was fake. After sticking, if you are pulling, it will pull your, 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 your paint along. So you have to be very yeah. careful to be sure that you're ordering the right one. But I know some are available on Amazon or something if you check. But you can, you can also use masking tape. Somebody just mentioned that. Normally you use masking tape. But there are also fake masking tape right now. How to know fake masking tape? There is Abro. Abro is the original. No, Ambro, Am, Ambro is the original, okay. not Abro. So they are just two confusing words. But the major one, how to know it, it is more creamish, not whitish. The masking tape. Then roll it backward, mm -hmm. then you use it to get something nice. So um, any other question? Okay, Bukola or Domo is also asking. Bukola, Bukola or Mute and ask. We have just oh, yeah. five minutes. Usually we do one and a half hours. We started a bit late, so maybe we can give about five, 10 minutes extra. But usually by 8.30, we are done if we start seven on the dot. But we started about 12 minutes late today. Okay, okay. good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the expository talk and everything. Thank you so much. I was Thank just you. going to ask, yeah, everything you said, cool and fine, <laughs> but from the point of view of an administrator, I didn't quite hear anything about cost effectiveness, you know, in all of this, because, you know, as much as you want the school to be beautiful, you want the children to learn, you want that, you want that, there's a part of cost, especially now that things are crazy. A lot of these papers, a lot of this paperwork, yeah, in, um, imported. You hardly have the ones that you have that are made in Nigeria. They are so sore to look at mm -hmm. when you place them on walls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would like to know tips you have, cost effectiveness of this display. If you have some tips, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Where will I start? Okay. Mm -hmm. Normally, um, the best approach to 
course, it could be effectiveness in terms of um, material. The first method is to gather what type of material is going to be needed to transform the school for next term. Um, one of the, the, the most important of material is the background paper, sugar paper, fluorescent paper, and there's a difference between card and paper. A card is hard, while the paper is soft. And then I, will, I do advise a card for background than a paper. I normally, I also sell, and uh, most of my materials are made in Nigeria. And my, my materials are outstanding as a Nigerian made material. <laughs> So um, for, for that material, in terms of background paper, you can use um, Pelican card, you can use embossed card. Embossed card is not that colorful again. And I observed that it's, it's also expensive. It can be expensive and it's not that colorful. So I tend to drop it for some days now. Then sometime if the money is not that flowing in, there's a way we combine cardboard and colorful materials together. So that um, improvisation very important because these days some of these even the uh, pelican card I sell I sell it for twenty for two thousand uh, for two hundred naira for one that is twenty thousand for a rim and I'm sure that by the time I'm producing another one next three weeks I'm going to be selling it again for maybe two twenty because there's no way I'll get to that market that the price would have actually changed because. Um, they already know that school is resuming soon, so they will be increasing the fee almost every week now. So even production as also, if you want to be getting materials, you don't need to wait till September or August. I observe that is the time that printing of books starts. And I now, last year, I get to observe that school printing, the economy of school printing is very large. I stay in Shomolu local government and I'm in the Shomolu area. And during that time, I observe a lot of printer prints, mostly what they are printing, is only this time I'll be seeing electron, post, uh, electron poster. But as at last year, mostly everything they were printing was all about book cover, school album, book cover, school record book, school book, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, test books and more. So those are the time they are going to be busy printing a lot of stuff. So you can be getting your materials now. And materials, how do you monitor material in the school? If it is, uh, shall I say this one out very well? A teacher should also have a point, a, 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 a form of uh, contribution to material in the school. Let me put it well, wait, before any teacher tackle me over there. <laughs> um, how do I put it? If a school should be able to provide at least 80% of materials needed for the teacher, to decorate the classroom. And 80% is a lovely classroom. But there are some teachers that actually have outstanding, they need outstanding learning environment. They want something that is just even out of, the school can only provide you with basic and little aesthetically appealing material. But you can now go to the shop and just add little money, maybe just 5,000 naira in the whole of the term, and just what use it to add to the resources. It can be buying colorful flashcard. It can be buying that money can be used to buy a colorful flashcard. Maybe you want your own border to be unique. You want a uniform border for the whole of your board in the classroom and more. So the school should be ready to pay at least seventy percent or eighty percent. While the teacher should also bring in something from not money, just something from anywhere to be able to make the classroom also outstanding. And uh, I don't know the question I have not answered again from that angle. I know that angle is a very tough one, but as much as possible, get to know all the materials. If you know all the materials, you will um, 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 visit some of the shops outside there. I, I sell, my website is ebencourt.com. And um, I also distribute to anybody you want to go and buy from majorly at Yaba, Lagos, Nigeria. Um, some of the materials there I distribute. In Munshin also I distribute. I'm a distributor and I also sell directly to school owners. But um, there's some material you can also get outside of me, like cardboard. I don't sell cardboard. I don't sell fluorescent paper. I don't sell sugar paper. I only sell Pelican card, which is the material I use for any display board you will see by me over there. But you can go to Yaba. Yaba, you will see material that are not that expensive to buy. At Mushin, 
not expensive to buy. There's a place called Art World, very expensive to buy. So you will need to know the location at which you want to buy material. Hmm? So if you buy material, little material from eBay Court, buy another one from this person, but as much as possible, get to know which one is expensive and which one is not expensive. It's not expensive. And uh, if I answer the question, because I can use 25 hours to answer that question. <laughs> that question is very tough. Okay, thank you. Another thing I want to advise school administrators, always work with a budget and make the budget available before the school year starts because really there are so many appealing materials all over. And if you're not disciplined, yeah. you might end up you know, going beyond what your school can afford. So always work with the budget and let that be done before the school year starts so that you don't get distracted and just start buying you know, indiscriminately in as much as you want your school to be fine. Okay, someone is asking here, will the slides be made available? Okay, basically all the all the um, video, all the replays for any webinar I hold are on my website, unless it's a paid webinar, all my free webinars are on my, on my website and my YouTube channel. So visit my channel on YouTube, Nancy Ekwezu, and watch the replay. Most people do not like to give out their slides because a lot of people are, I'm sorry to say, unprofessional with them. They might go and start hosting webinars with it or doing stuff and really that's not what anybody wants to know. And so, Ben, are you willing to share the slides? Because I think it's better that they watch the replay because everything that you do, it's so personalized and I think it's just your own unique brand and not necessarily. Yeah, let me, um, let me give you more resources. I have um, endless of practical resources on my YouTube channel. Wow. So my YouTube channel, my name is Odetola Ebenezer Israel. And on my YouTube channel, you will see a lot. You will see a lot that you can use to transform your classes. Even the theory I'm talking about, I have the, I have the slide presentation there. I mean, one of the places I've actually been to, to talk about this. So, um, but for slide, I've been to a state before in somewhere in Delta State, and I have to share my slide, give it out, and I was like, yeah, nothing. So I was now told that somebody was using the slide to present somewhere. So since exactly. that time, I stopped sharing slide. Then since that time, I said, I just, all my resources online, you can go out. The one I released online, and you know, there's something about knowledge. I release, if I come to your school to present something, I will still present this, but in another way. So exactly. there are different ways they are going to be presented. Mm -hmm. If I come to your school, I may state it according to the objective of your school. Mm -hmm. Everything I'm doing right now, I'm stating it according to the objective of the topic, which is to address what? Administrator. Making sure that they know how the classroom practice is done and how to guide teachers on how to create something wonderful in the learning environment. Okay, so visit my, my website, www.nancyakwezu.com and visit the um, events. Um, uh, my website, www.nancyakwezu.com, events website, www.eventcut.com and you'll get lots of materials. And then for the YouTube channel, I've shared the link to my YouTube, YouTube channel there, but it's basically my name. Just check Nancy Akwezu on YouTube and you'll get it and check events name. Ebenez or Detola Ebeneza Israel, and you get his, well, his YouTube channel. So you also get a lot of materials on my YouTube channel and my website. And don't forget my book. This goes for just 5,000 Naira, and we deliver to your doorstep. I have three books, Dear Educator, The School Administrator's Companion, and Effective Boarding House Administration. So if you have a boarding house, this is the book for you. It touches so many things. So, so many things about boarding house. All right, so I'll be back in Lagos in a few days. And I'll, if you, so if you need to order your book, you can order and I ship a very reputable company and it comes right to your doorstep in your office or your house, okay? It says, Nancy, please share your contact. So my contact, www.nancyekwezu.com. My YouTube channel, Nancy Ekwezu. Okay. And then my, my uh, WhatsApp, 0803 5880367. Someone is asking how they can join Eben's um, group. Eben, would you want to share that? Yes, I've done that. Let me share that again. To so join my group, 081 
0809-3409-6110. That's my number. So you can use that number to join my, my WhatsApp group. Okay, so at this point, we want to say thank you so much. If you have other questions, please type them on the YouTube video, on the video there. Eben can, you know, answer, I can tag him, he'll come in and answer them, or the ones I can answer, I'll be very glad to do them. So thank you so much for your time. We do not like to keep our guests beyond 8.30, even though we started about 10 minutes um, late because of a little technical um, glitch we had. My number is 0803-5880367, website www nancyexpresso.com. So I'm going to type my WhatsApp number here, right here. And then we'll call it a day. Thank you so much. You can, you can unmute now. Let me just unmute everyone so we can say good night to one another. And thank you for staying till the end. I really, 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 really appreciate it. They have already unmuted, so you can't come. Goodbye. Goodbye. You can put your video on. Start your, you can start your video so that we can all... Okay. Start video. Yes. All right. So you can start your video to say good night. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying to the end. If you have questions, go to my YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I won't be your friend anymore. And I will tell my daddy for you. So. <laughs> yeah. so much and I will tell my daddy that you're not my friend anymore. Okay. Good so night. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you next time. All right. So next Wednesday, I'll be hosting someone for special needs. I'm sure you know Lola Neke. She's the go-to person for special needs in Nigeria. I should be coming to talk to us about what school administrators should know about special needs. Okay, so see you next Wednesday. Good night. All right. Bye. Bye.